Hi, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and in this video I'll be looking at the Navicam 860 portable car stereo display from Speedall. This is a standalone wide 9.3 IPS portable display that allows both wired and wireless CarPlay and Android Auto in any car. It passes audio out of its two watt built-in speaker. We can cast audio wirelessly over Bluetooth or via FM radio. And there's also a wired option to an AUX audio input port. This display also can cast video from your mobile over mirror link for Android and AirPlay for iOS. On the back of the display, there is a 4K dash camera that's integrated into the back of the display and a 1080p rear video camera comes supplied too. In the box you get a paper instruction manual, there is the 9.3 inch display itself along with a Lexar 64 gig SD card pre-installed inside it. There's a 2.5 meter 12 volt socket to USB-C power cable, 4.5 meter to 1080p rear view camera and two mounting brackets. A long 2 meter 3.5 millimeter aux cable, a long USB A to lightning cable, and a long USB A to USB C cable for charging your devices as well as using it for wired CarPlay and wired Android Auto. The whole display has a nice design to it with a fairly thin casing and fairly thin bezels around the display. Although there is a little bit thicker chin area to the lower front that houses the Speedle logo rather than having any other functionality on it. Featuring 24 centimeters wide by 11 centimeters high and approximately 6.7 meters deep including the mount. It sits quite low profile on your dashboard than some 4x3 portable displays. The 9.3 inch IPS display has a wide viewing angle and its soft plastic mounted base can also tilt and rotate to gain the best angle on your dashboard. With this dash camera mounted on the back of the display, it's best to locate this display directly on the dashboard. This camera can also be raised upwards by around two centimeters to get a better view over a dashboard and onto the road ahead. Loop recordings are saved onto an inserted SD card and can be reviewed back on the display itself or by connecting to the display via its road cam companion app. There's only one button at the top of the display to toggle the display on and off as well as holding it down to shut the display down. There are no volume buttons or brightness buttons. All of this is accessed in its software and floating button interface. The rear camera lens has a small amount of pan and tilt adjustment to position the camera in a suitable direction out of your windscreen whilst maintaining a good viewing angle on the front display. The lens carries a 140 degree field of view with an f1.8 aperture. Behind the display there are four IO ports and slots on the right hand side. There is the USB-C port to power the display, a port for the rear camera, an SD card slot to save dash camera recordings onto. There's also an optional GPS accessory port to record location data for the dash cam. On the left side of the display, there is a USB-A port for charging and wired CarPlay and Android Auto. And there's also an AUX output port for wired audio. After connecting the 12 volt adapter and setting up the display on my car dashboard, I turned over the car to power the display on. And in six, 0.7 seconds the display lands on its main menu interface which consists of six primary info panels or buttons and a panel displaying the live feed of the connected dash cams there are quick options to access apple carplay and android auto mirror link and airplay casting and two main buttons are for toggling the audio output and accessing the settings screen in the settings menu there are lots of options to configure the display and how it records how it displays and how it sounds. You can mute all the annoying button beeps that you get in the system menus, change the language, set sleep and loop recording times through to selecting the driver side position and toggling between split and full screen display modes. Firing up wireless CarPlay or Android Auto is very simple. You first select either option from the main menu and then connect your device to the display's Bluetooth profile. It took around 15 seconds from Bluetooth pairing to the Apple CarPlay menu and 17 seconds seconds for Android Auto. Interaction and responsiveness seems quite good on CarPlay and the wide display allows for up to 10 icons per screen, unlike the usual eight icons on lower resolution displays and head units. This also means that the touch points, icons and buttons in CarPlay apps are a little bit smaller and more widely spaced apart. 
So if you're controlling the display from an arm's reach, you have to pay a little more attention on pressing the smaller UI elements in CarPlay. I did encounter some poor quality with the internal microphone within CarPlay. The recordings contained some stuttering. Hello, this is Anthony from CarPlayLife.com. This is an audio message from the Speedall 860. And because of this, Siri found it quite difficult to understand commands. This is avoidable when you use Bluetooth audio output. Hi, this is Anthony from carplaylife.com and this is an audio test using the Speedall Navcam 860 and this is an audio test. Because it bypasses the internal microphone and uses your phone's microphone instead. Over on Android Auto, the Navicam 860 shares a common issue on a few of these displays that are reviewed in that when set to widescreen mode, the Android Auto platform can't display correctly and it's all stretched out. Using the split screen viewing mode gets around this issue but for full screen use you have to live with the stretched out nature where circular icons are a little bit more oval shaped. In split screen mode you can have the front and or rear camera feed displaying alongside CarPlay and Android Auto which is quite convenient and you prefer this screen layout but personally I prefer to use full screen display mode. The onboard 2 watt speaker audio isn't the greatest solution for music playback and it's only really suitable for voice based or navigation audio. So it's very recommended to use one of the three other audio output options. The first is FM transmission. You first find a frequency free from any FM traffic. Although I did find some station present options were easily overrun with the display as well. So that's quite good. And then you simply dial into the same frequency on the display. Once synced to the same frequency, the audio will start to play over your car radio. And using the user interface, you can save up to three FM frequencies, which can be handy if you travel long distances and you encounter interference along the way. Connecting the aux cable between the car stereo and the display is the next best audio solution in terms of quality. If you listen hard, there is a little interference from this audio output method, but nothing too significant to affect listening. Being wired, there are more cables to connect to the stereo, so it isn't visually appealing if you're looking for a nice clean installation. And finally, there is Bluetooth audio, the best wireless audio output solution if your car stereo has Bluetooth audio. After pairing your phone with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, the display will then reconnect your phone to the car stereo to share its audio with. This will also mean your wheel controls will work because at this point you're basically connected to your phone, meaning interactions with your wheel controls will also work too. Reconnections when entering into the car worked okay, although I did find the Bluetooth audio connection did take a little bit longer than I expected. You can choose to connect either your iPhone or Android device to the display using the side USB-A port on the display. Wire connections only occur if connecting first before the display powers up, otherwise it will default to wireless. As a dash cam, the Navicam 860 performed okay. You can quickly access the camera feed from either the front or rear camera from the main menu. And once viewing, you can swipe the screen to toggle front, rear and split screen modes, as well as access saved recordings. You also get quick options to start and stop recording, toggle the audio recording, save an event, take a photo, view images, switch between cameras and horizontally flip the camera image. Accessing recordings can be done on the display itself via its basic playback interface. From here you can select individual recordings and view them on a wider player off to the side of them. Alternatively you can connect over Wi-Fi to the display and using the Rodecam app on your phone you can then browse and playback video and save them to your phone's camera roll. As for its quality its 4k resolution is limited by its optical sensor which I found to be a little bit lacking in areas in both day and night recordings. This f1.8 and 140 degree field of view does a decent job of capturing the road ahead with natural looking daytime recording footage that isn't oversaturated as some other dash cams that are out there. I found it did lack some detail though as well as sharpness in areas and its high exposure or lack of wide dynamic range added to this lack of detail in bright areas as well as dark areas at night time. 
At night, the sensor also struggled to maintain detail in areas. And although there are some shadow detail in dimly lit areas, anywhere near a light source such as street lamps and shop signs were just a little bit too overbrightened and carried excessive bloom around them, which made them a lot less legible to read, as well as limiting the amount of number plates that could be read as well. As an included dash cam, it performs well, but the main flaw though was due to its soft plastic mount. Any road bumps or vibration would easily transfer to the dash camera and resulted in heavy shaky footage. There's no software or hardware stabilization to save this from happening, so using the soft mount makes this dash cam not fit for purpose. Luckily, they do offer a hard mount option that should improve things, but I didn't have this available for me for this review. Its rear-facing camera records at 1080p and also has IR support for recording in the dark. I found this latter option a little hit and miss as recordings would constantly go from color to black and white where passing street lamps or cars would light up the car's interior. With no option available to lock the IR for nighttime recordings, this also led to my frustration with the camera's overall quality. I did find its available mounting options good though, in that you can choose to mount the camera onto either a rear window or use it for a headrest to record passengers or babies in the back seat. It also makes for a good wide angled shot of the front interior too. Its mirror cast options performed okay, with audio sync mostly in time with the video on certain audio sources. Getting casting to work via AirPlay on iPhone was much easier than Android, however, which still managed to elude me. Once connected though, the formatting of the video being cast wasn't just right, and it appeared a little bit squashed to fit on the 9.3 inch display. Video wouldn't go full screen either, even when zoomed, so this left thick black borders on both sides of the video so eventually the video size on the display isn't that far off the size of the video streaming from your phone. The Speedle Navicam 860 currently retails for $159.99 using a coupon on Amazon which considering you get a capable dash camera and a CarPlay and Android Auto display all in one unit it's a pretty good deal. Android Auto fans will have to be a little bit more aware of its full screen limitations and all buyers of this display will have to be careful when and locating the rear camera so it plays nicely with the IR sensor and opt for the firmer hard mount solution to get the best out of both cameras. If you're a Mac user I found you had to format the SD card to FAT32 on your Mac first before using it. Otherwise, formatting SD card from the display will make it unreadable on your Apple desktop. Accessing the recorded videos from the connected phone was very, very smooth though, when you're already connected to its Wi-Fi for wireless CarPlay. The app picked up the camera without any disconnection from CarPlay, and I was able to browse, watch, and playback content fairly quickly. CarPlay and Android Auto use was decent and quick to launch. However, microphone performance was lacking heavily in all audio connections other than Bluetooth. I found its built-in 18 watt quick charge 3.0 USB port on the 12 volt adapter a welcome addition. Charging from the display port will only give you 5 watts, so being able to charge much faster from the socket by USB ports might be quite limited in the car to be very, very handy. If you're looking for an all-in-one CarPlay on Android Auto and dash cam portable car stereo display, as long as you use its Bluetooth audio output, this Navicam 860 from Speedle doesn't carry as many negatives to truly put me off from recommending this display for your consideration. All right, have you found this video helpful? Give us a thumbs up if it has, and comments are always welcome if you have any questions about this Navicam 860 from Speedle. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.